gliding along the Canal Grande towards the Venetian Lagoon. Within minutes, the scenery changes entirely. The lagoon is home to over 30 small islands, most of them uninhabited. After a half an hour, we reach Burano, famous for its brightly colored fishermen's houses. Local Sebastiano de Rossi advises us to come early to avoid the tourists. He's the operator of a travel portal, and he tells us why the houses here came to be painted in such eye-popping shades. The houses on Burano are so colorful because the fishermen used to be out at sea for long periods. And this way they could see their homes from afar. It made them less homesick. These days, the brightly painted houses are such a big part of Borano's image that owners must get permission to change their color. Another eye-catching sight is the leaning bell tower of Borano, which has a tilt of about 1.8 meters. The ground is very swampy, and the church tower was simply poorly planned by the architect. But today we're quite proud of it, because it's become a landmark. No one can imagine Burano without the tower. Or without its hand-tatted lace. These types of floral patterns and textured embroidery are typical of Burano lace, which enjoys a long tradition here. Today, just a few women still practice this craft, like this lace maker in a specialty shop. But hand-tatted lace has its price. Like this tablecloth, which took 20 lace makers two years to make. This cloth is approximately 5 by 2 meters. It's comprised of individual parts which have been put together. When folks ask how much it costs, we say, as much as a Ferrari. And this wedding veil is priceless. It was once made for the Italian royal family. These days, just a few of the island's 2,500 residents live from fishing. They sell their catch in Venice and to Borano's numerous restaurants. Their menus feature a wide variety of fresh fish and seafood. So what's the locals' favorite fish dish? The locals love marinated sardines, in the morning with a glass of wine. That's typical. <laughs> After lunch, we set off for the neighboring island of Morano, a 20-minute boat ride away. Morano is world famous for its glass. In the 14th century, the island's glassblowers already had a reputation as being the best of their kind. Royals were among their customers. Today, Morano is still home to glassblowers who are masters of their trade. It takes years of experience to know how to fuse pieces of glass together so they won't crack and to create certain colors. It's no secret that Murano glass is known for its many colors. To start off, the glass is almost black, very dark. But we have a lot of experience and can change the colors during the process to make them lighter and more transparent and to decide which colors suit which object. Whether it's an elaborate chandelier for thousands of euros or a more affordable figurine, most visitors take home a souvenir made from Murano glass. Actually, we've got some friends who are getting married this year and we thought maybe a wedding gift for them. Yeah. So, yeah. Or a pair of earrings. <laughs> yeah, okay. We bought two pieces of glass. Two large pieces of glass that they'll ship to us next month. Yeah. Yes, we're very excited. But few tourists ever spend the night on Burano or Murano. With its breathtaking scenery, Venice is just too close and too tempting.